So on today's episode of the Intentional Midlife Mom podcast, we're going to be talking about common reasons that midlife women, midlife moms feel kind of lost. Uh, I see this every single day coming alongside my coaching clients and and it's the key is really understanding what's happening before you know how you can move forward. And we are actually going to uh, tackle both of those sides of the coin on this episode. So if you are a midlife woman, if you are a midlife mom, or if you are just someone who feels lost in general, this is going to be an episode that you want to make sure you tune in for. So let's jump in. Well, hey there, I am Jennifer Roskamp, a certified life coach and homeschool mom of nine who is passionate about helping women just like you embrace the here and now while also being focused on creating the life you actually want. As a midlife mom in her 40s, about to be a mom in my 50s, I've realized that it's so easy to lose yourself in caring for your family, your home, and all the things. Until one day you realize you're not even sure who you are anymore or what you even want in life. So on this podcast, we're going to work on managing yourself well so that you can manage all of the other things and people well too. So let's dive in to what it means to manage your home, your time, your family, and yourself well. This is the Intentional Midlife Mom podcast. Sorry, Hosanna, Hosanna. So this is such a common feeling, this feeling lost, this feeling like I'm not sure what my purpose is. And if you are a midlife mom like I am, uh, it's common to feel like I don't know what my purpose is anymore. Maybe when your kids were younger, you had a better handle on that. You had a, a better idea of, of who you were and what you were doing and what your purpose was. But as as our kids get older and the way that they need us changes, it's hard for us to to even know what our purpose is anymore. The house gets more quiet. The things they used to need us for, they just don't. And emotions change. The way they talk to us changes. The way they think changes. And when our kids go through all these changes, well, we have no choice but to go through changes as well, but it's real hard for us to figure out what that even looks like. And so what often happens is, you know, as your kids start getting older and these changes start happening in them, you're not sure what changes to make in yourself. And so you just kind of stay stuck in this weird, this weird place between who you used to be and, and who you're, who you're trying to figure out you need to become. And, and we want to, we want to make this transformation. We want to, you know, kind of recreate ourselves in this newly, slightly, slightly different role that we have as a mom, but it's really hard to know how to do that. And so as a result, we just kind of feel lost. We just kind of go through the motions every day and, and we just kind of aren't real sure what to do. We're just kind of along for the ride. And so I have found five common reasons that we feel lost as midlife moms. And really, these are things, this, this whole idea of feeling lost, this can happen at any age or stage in reality, especially when you're going through a transitional time. It could be a transitional time like your kids are younger and they're just starting to go to, going to school. It could be when you are older and you're moving from the workforce into retirement years. When we have to step into a new role, when there are new nuances of, of who we are and, and how we're supposed to fulfill the roles that we now have, it, it's, it's common to feel this sense of loss and lack of purpose and just uncertainty. And we crave that. We crave having a purpose. We, we crave having the knowledge of what am I here for and what am I doing? And, and then we get into, you know, like, what do I say yes to? And what do I say no to? What do I spend my time on? What don't I spend my time on? Th those are all kind of like offsets that happen 
in the everyday trenches of life where if we don't know our purpose and if we are just feeling lost on that practical level, we don't know how to function either. And so really it's kind of understanding understanding this piece, understanding who we are, knowing who we are and and what our purpose is and and what really what that would look like every day allows us to know how to how to really function in the everyday practical ways. So this is really a key concept that um, that you'll want to make sure that you you hang out here for. So so let's jump into these things. Uh, reason number one that you're feeling lost is because you only see yourself as the roles you currently have, right? And so there's nothing wrong with identifying yourself with and in these roles. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm a volunteer. I'm a dental hygienist or whatever whatever it is that you might be at work, right? But when that's all we see, we lose sight of the fact that we are also people who have our own thoughts, who have our own likes and dislikes, who have our own feelings, who have our own fears, who have our own set of strengths and weaknesses. And these can even change over time, right? A lot of times our, a lot of times these things change, you know, as, as we get older and, and as these roles change, Therefore, our thoughts, our feelings, our strengths, our weaknesses, these often change along with them. And our fears certainly do. I certainly wasn't worried about my kids out driving on the road when they were toddlers. <laughs> you know, but that, that is a fear that I have. That is an uncertainty and, and a worry that I have now that obviously I just didn't have before. But the truth is, when you know who this person is, you know how to show up in your everyday life, in the little things and in the big things. And so it's important to recognize that you are a person who manages those roles. You are a person who fills those roles. And we can often lose sight of the fact that we are people. So that's reason number one that you might be feeling lost. Reason number two, you are allowing your past to limit your present and your future. One of the things I remind my coaching clients of all the time is that you can always start over. You can always try again. You can always do something different. You can do these things anytime. I even created my most popular five-day challenge to date, and I've been doing challenges for close to eight years now. It's called the Write a New Chapter Challenge, and its purpose really is to help you draw your line in the sand on day one and say, I'm choosing different. I'm choosing a new path. And and the challenge then really teaches you how to actually write the present and the future you want. It's this whole concept that I talk about a lot, including here on the podcast, this whole concept of being in the backseat where you're just along for the ride, where life is happening to you and getting into the driver's seat where you have a lot more say so in where you're going every day. And most people don't even recognize that there is this whole backseat driver's seat. And so when we're in the backseat, we just say things to ourselves like, this is just the way it is. And we just accept and we think our only opportunity is to just accept what comes. And the driver's seat says, yes, you do have to accept many elements of your life, many circumstances, many situations. But there are also plenty of things. There are plenty of ways in which you can choose to play an active role in your life as well, rather than just a passive one. And so allowing our past to limit our present and future is when really we assume that it's always been this way. So I guess this is just the way it is. This is just the way I am. You've tried this, that, or the other thing before, and it's never worked. It's never allowed you, whatever it is that you've tried, your life has always gone back to the way it's kind of always been. And so 
we're looking to the past and allowing it to hold us back. We're assuming and making the connection that the past is also needing. And really the only option is for our past to rule over our present and our future. But that's that's reason number two why we so often feel lost is really we're stuck in the past and we're allowing the past to limit us. And we're allowing our past to write the present and the future when it doesn't have to. You can always decide to start over, try again, do something, do something different, write a new chapter, and you can decide that at any time. Reason number three is that you know you want something different. You want something more. Maybe you're feeling tired of life this way, and you're just kind of feeling muted. This is a word I hear. This is a concept I hear from especially midlife women all the time. I'm just going through the motions and everything just feels muted as a result. Because this is really what happens when you spend too much time in the backseat and when you have just been going through the motions. As a midlife mom, now sometimes it can really honestly just feel easier to just do the same things. To do things the way you've always done them, almost ignoring that your life has changed quite drastically. I know I've experienced this in the last five years as my kids have started to grow older and they need me in completely different ways. But when we just, again, when we just are kind of experiencing it all, it kind of leaves you on the outside looking in. And so I've really discovered that if I'm in the backseat of my life or on the outside looking in or just trying to get through the day, I'm not really plugged into my emotions either. It's really the reality of not being present. It's just, it's just kind of being. It's just kind of, I'm alive every day. And those feelings and emotions just kind of being muted. You're not really experiencing necessarily profound lows, but you're not also experiencing much in the way of highs. Everything's just kind of muted and dull. So this is another common reason. If your emotions are in this muted, dull place, this leads to just this feeling of being lost. Reason number four is that you're living with regret. This so easily happens in midlife. There's been enough time really for life to kind of veer away from what you had planned years ago. And it's not even necessarily that these, that, that, that life has veered into a bad way and that your life has taken a bad direction. It's just different. And so then when we start to realize that we easily start to think about and take ownership and really Take ownership of things that don't even belong to us, but but really we reflect on all the ways we've messed things up and we start feeling guilt, maybe even a little bit of shame. And in time, these things give way to regret. And regret is kind of like this 50 pound weight. It's essentially trying to move forward with this 50 pound weight on your shoulders. And so you're trying to move forward to do things different, to change and to to really grow into this new role, into this new phase of life, but you're doing so underneath the weight of regret. And this just isn't possible. In order for you to grow into the new you and really into this new phase, to be able to be there for yourself and others in the way that you actually want, you've got to shed that weight of regret first. And that's hard. But living with regret is contributing to these feelings of being lost and a lack of purpose and lack of meaning in your life. That weight of regret, regret is playing a big role in that. And so it's time to not only recognize that, but to also get rid of it. And so the fifth reason that you're likely feeling this this sense of loss, this sense of Who am I and where am I going? Because you're also feeling powerless, allowing yourself to feel powerless to experience anything different. 
this is really all there is. It will, there will, this, this is the best it's going to get. And in reality, there will always be elements of your life that you can't do much about. Now, the disclaimer I have to that is that you always control your thoughts about something. You do always control your perceptions. You do always control the meaning that you attach to a situation, to an experience, to a challenge. But there will always be these elements of life that you can't do much about. But you are totally able to start, to stop, to create, to change, to improve, to learn, to grow, anything you want. Yet in working alongside women and in, in, in really in this coaching relationship for almost 10 years, I know what pretty much always comes next. Okay, you're telling me that I can start, stop, create, change, improve, learn, grow. Yes, I can agree to all of that. But how? How do I do that? And that how is, is exactly what my five-day Write a New Chapter Challenge helps you do. It helps you find yourself. It helps you define or maybe even redefine yourself really to uncover who you are and who you want to be. This challenge helps you find who you are in the varying roles that you have, which is so important for midlife women whose roles are, are changing as your kids get older and become adults. I mean, I've got nine kids, so while I've still got a six-year-old, I also have three adult children, and I'm in the midst of navigating this midlife mom role too. And so I know how easily you do feel lost and you do struggle to know who you are in this season and in these roles. And so the challenge helps you do that. The Write a New Chapter Challenge also shows you exactly how to answer the questions like, how did I get here? What am I doing? And how do I find more joy, more contentment and Really, how do I essentially do the things that will create the life I want? This challenge really shows you how to be the person you want to be, to show up for yourself and others really in the best way possible. And so maybe like me, you've realized you don't get the years that you've whittled away back, but you can make sure that you are creating the legacy you actually want. The challenge also helps you uncover the parts of yourself that are keeping you stuck and really figuring out why you're stuck, why you're not following through with what you've planned, why you're avoiding things, why you're stuck in a pattern of low motivation or chronic procrastination and sometimes even self-sabotage. So in the challenge, we call this uncovering the resistance. And it really is something that no one else is talking about, but we should. And this is truly what it means. All of these things are truly what it means to take back control of your life. It's, it's learning to take back control of yourself because taking control of yourself is how you're going to take back control of your life. And just for you podcast listeners, I want to give you the first piece of what this looks like. I want to let you in on step one that everyone who ever works with me in a, in a coaching format, whether in my coaching communities or programs, or as a daily one-on-one -on -one coaching client, I want to give you that first piece free. And so you are invited to join me in my brand new, absolutely free class finding yourself, uncovering your life. It's a 40-minute class that will show you how to uncover, rediscover, redefine who you are, finding what your purpose and your passions are. It's the first piece in what it means to write a new chapter. And for a limited time, you can go to findingyourselfuncoveringyourjoy.com to get this class for free, but for a limited time only. Your life can be what you make of it, which includes the parts you maybe wouldn't choose and the parts you have the ability to create 
to create this amazing journey journey and this amazing amazing legacy so that you're bringing your best self to everyone and everything you do. So head to finding yourself, uncovering your joy to get started. I will see you there and I'll catch up with you on the next episode of the Intentional Midlife Mom podcast.